Hey guys, so today I want to talk a little bit about kind of the next step up we can do maybe possibly as small time breeders or people that have a little bit of a larger collection. So I've talked about this a little bit in previous videos where, you know, there's nothing necessarily wrong with tubs and keeping in rack systems. We just kind of have to approach it from a little bit of a different way. Like, yes, people keeping them on sterile conditions with just paper towels or paper and a single deli cup may work to have them survive and be able to reproduce and live a, you know, fairly qualified, uh, a fairly high quality life to where they're reproducing and living over decades, really regardless of species. And we've seen that done with a lot of very successful breeders over the past 20 years, you know, regardless of who that is, very large places that, you know, supply the, you know, the individual chain stores or people who sell the individual, you know, just brick and mortar stores, like even your own like local reptile stores. But, you know, for a small time people, I think maybe we could start thinking about the next step up. And kind of what's been going on a lot lately is people talking about, you know, enrichment, adding UVB and light to their things, to their snakes. You know, we always do that with lizards and things like that, but not really with snakes. You know, for a lot of snakes, it's we've been kind of, you know, in like the dark ages for a while to where, you know, ball pythons were very, very popular and, you know, YouTube proliferated and personalities and stuff were very popular and really been really cool. And don't get me wrong, I think that there's absolutely still, you know, they, they played a very important big role in shaping the community that is. It's made us even more popular. The proliferation of all the ball python works and stuff is certainly what got me interested in snakes a lot more than I am, or at least that I was when I very first started seeing, you know, people on the internet, on YouTube, seeing these crazy cool snakes and seeing how you could keep them and they would still maintain being healthy but i think we can take the next step and saying okay they're surviving we're providing them what they need to live how can we improve that and so i've been working on downstairs uh if you guys have been seeing on my instagram or stuff like that i've made a couple posts about making a new colubrid rack system so kind of the industry standard is for a lot of colubrids at least with north american colubrids is kind of like this 32 to 41 quart sterilite tub at least as, uh, as far as we're talking about rack systems or breeding on a larger scale that's kind of what a lot of people think of or if you only have a couple of them like you have one corn snake or one california king snake you have them maybe in a 20 gallon aquarium or maybe even a 40 gallon aquarium um but that's kind of like you know the minimal like standard okay this is what it is it seems to be accepted people have kind of taken you know the next step up in size and seen that they're moving around so what I wanted to do was, because I still have rack systems, I don't have the space to keep walls and walls of 75-gallon aquariums or large plexiglass things, what can I do to take the next step up to improve some of my colubrids, you know, just their general lives and how I keep them? So here's what we're going to do for this next one, and I'm going to show you kind of the basic setup. There's no water in here because I'd be sloshing around and make a big mess for everything else. But this is what I'm hoping to be is going to be a bioactive tub that won't have UVB, but I do keep a 12 hour light cycle downstairs in my snake room to where I have noticed that there has been, you know, an active change in them. They're responding to that. They're feeding a little bit better and everything else like that. So light does play a, uh, you know, a big part of even with snakes who are supposedly uh, grepuscular or nocturnal. Here is the bioactive setup for our California king snake Charlemagne. So he's in blue right now, so he's not real, real happy about this. But I wanted to try to go with this one because he seems to be the most active of any of the colubrid snakes that I have. He's the one that will, every time I throw in a new paper towel uh, roll like this, he will immediately come over, he'll check it out, he'll, he'll, he'll smell it, he'll go through it, he'll play around in it. Every time I move the plants, he would go in there and investigate it and anything else like that. So, and I'm afraid I can't get that great of an entire picture and forgive like the pet beds and stuff there on the ground, guys. But this is a 71 quart under bed, like blanket or sheet sweater box. So this is something that, you know, for, I, I'm going to keep kind of referring to this as the industry standard for something you would put like a small boa or a blood python in to where... You know, like a, a ball python you'd have in a 41, or if you're using vision racks, a V70 type rack. So this is significantly larger than what a lot of people would deem as like, you know, the bare minimum. And that's because colubrids are, they're a little bit more highly evolved snakes. 
They are more diurnal for the most part. They move around a lot more. They're more active hunting, seeking predators than, say, a ball, than a, a bleh, 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 than a python or a boa constrictor. So I wanted to give them more move, to, more room to move around. So the rack system that I have set up is a system that I have for, you know, for some of my smaller boas before I move them up to Christmas tree tubs or to actual individual four to six foot cages. But so this new rack I have, it's a 10 tub rack that I'm going to have my colubrids in the bottom. And then I'll be putting a couple of the carpet pythons, the smaller carpet pythons in there as well. So in this, you know, here's the rack. I have an 11 inch heat tape strapped across this back little section right here. So here's the hot, actually it's going to be over here on this other side is where it's going to sit in. This will be the front, this will be the back. So it's going to sit back here. So he's going to have this nice warm panel back here for underbelly heat, which with this bioactive substrate is going to help maintain humidity and a little bit of moisture, but it's not going to be super, super wet and humid like you would for like a python or something like that. But, you know, this, if we have holes drilled out here, it's going to go in this rack system. Hey, buddy, how are you? I know, I'm sorry I'm doing this to you. So we still have this large water bowl. It's not naturalistic, but I like it because for ease of cleaning, it's they're fairly inexpensive and it's large enough to where he can actually entirely curl up in there and soak if he wants to. Although I've never really seen it, but I'm still going to give him the opportunity to do so if he wanted. So we have a hide here on this warm side where that heat tape's going to be. We have a hide here on this cool side. We have a paper towel roll just for something that we pipe to pull in. I may or may not keep those in this one because of the extra humidity that may build up here and we'll just have to monitor it as we go. Um, this won't hold up very well. This worked really well when he was on aspen bedding. So I would throw these in here as we go through paper towels like like crazy because that's what we do as snake keepers. And I would just put those in there for just for something for him to mess with for a couple of weeks until he pooped on it or he got it wet or something and I would just throw it out and throw a new one in as that goes on. But we have a multitude of stuff. So this is reptosoil and eco earth and cypress mulch is this kind of thick layer of substrate. You can see there's quite a bit in here and there's springtails in here. And eventually we're going to pick up some isopods species that will hopefully uh, be a, that, that can maintain some of the lower humidities. I want to say like powder blue and powder oranges isopods. Uh, those things hold up really well to kind of help maintain and digesting some of the poop. And they'll even digest sheds and stuff like that, too. Um, but we don't have any isopods in yet. We're just going to be the first one, how this is going to go. And then the rest, I'm going to do more naturalistic setups, either on cypress or on, uh, just aspen bedding. I don't really have enough of this nice soil to do more bioactive setups. So I'm just going to do it with just him. Um, I don't know how well bio setups will do with some of the larger snakes, like pythons and stuff like that, that have a lot more significant excrement. Uh, I know from a lot of people talking about their larger colubrids like bull snakes or uh, any of the other pituovis like that I have where they poop a lot and they're cleaning their t and they're cleaning out the tub or enclosure what it is quite significantly because they they digest very quickly. They have really fast metabolisms for reptiles. So I don't think a bio setup would be great for, you know, some of my like my bull snake moose or for uh, any of the pine snakes or gopher snakes or anything like that. So maybe a little bit more naturalistic for them, but this is just a little experiment to see what we're gonna do for this new tub and set up like that. So just a little something for you guys to think about is, hey, maybe I can do this. You know, I can't afford six foot PVC enclosures or I can't afford exoterras for every single one of my 10 snakes, but maybe this is something I could do. I have a rack. I can make a little bit larger one. These tubs are fairly inexpensive. They're less than $30 each, which is significantly less than a full Exoterra. And I can figure out and do a full bioactive little setup just like this. And in all honesty, if you did want to add UVB light, there are ways of doing that. You know, you can cut sections of the top of the lid that, that these things do have locking lids to where you could put up a screen mesh right there and put in a UV bulb for them to allow to bask if you wanted to. Uh, just the light cycle, I think, plays a pretty good part in this. And so we're just going to see how this goes. Hope this gave you a little bit of food for thought. Hope you enjoyed it. Gave you some ideas and maybe something you want to do. If you guys have any ideas for me about this particular setup or ideas for the future videos or anything else like that, please let me know down in the comments. I hope you have a great day and I'll catch you next time.